Hey, this is Mike Lindsay from Vital MX. I'm out here at Fox Raceway today, testing out the 2023 Honda Sierra 450R. As you can see by the bike behind me, we actually have the 50th anniversary edition bike. It is the 50th anniversary of Honda producing motocross bikes. So this is the bike we rode today. It is technically not any different than the standard 450. It just has the looks of the bike. It's an extra 300 bucks and we thought it'd be cool to shoot. But let's talk about what is new. This is the third year of this generation platform, Sierra 450. And typically what Honda does is if they're doing a four or five year model run, right there in the middle, they do a little series of updates. So this is the same basic bike, but it does have chassis and engine, and actually along with some suspension updates to kind of bring the whole package together. Their main goal is to try to make the bike better balanced and more rideable. My complaints with say the 21, 22 model were really down to how the power was delivered and kind of the lack of usability. Uh, you probably heard a lot of people complain in 21 that the mapping wasn't very clean on the bike. Um, it wasn't very connected. It kind of would garble off the bottom. Uh, the bike seemed to be happier running in mid RPM and above. So it was a bike that you did kind of try to use up all the gears. You really weren't short shifting. This year, they've changed the cam profile. They've gone from a 46 millimeter to a 44 millimeter throttle body. They've changed the intake port design on a few other things to really increase the torque. And to me, that was the most noticeable thing. It's much more connected. It really likes to be lugged. It's really fun to short shift this bike and a lot of corners just leave it in third if you can and it just rolls on really smooth and connected and it builds really well to the mid range. The power alone has really, for me, just changed the overall, ride overall rideability of this bike. However, it is not without trade-off. By changing these things, they have decreased the top end power of the bike a little bit. It still revs through pretty decent, but you can definitely feel it start to go flatter up top. But it is a 450, naturally you wanna to try to ride them at a lower RPM, ride them where they're more usable. So. I would overall take the trade off any day of the week on this bike. The maps are noticeable between each other, but in a certain area for me, I feel like map one, two, and three are pretty similar right off the bottom, which I enjoyed. They all had a certain connectivity to them. Um, that was easy to apply in corners. Second is just really dull all the way through the power. That is the smooth map. It doesn't build RPM very quick. It would be really good for somebody who maybe just jumps on this bike and thinks it's too much. Maybe he's riding in really slick conditions. But for the most part, I think the average consumer will like map one. It's very connected and smooth off the bottom, has a good healthy mid range, but it doesn't get away from you. Map three is aggressive. It, again, connected at the bottom, a little bit of a harsher hit, but not bad, but it builds mid range power really quick, revs really fast. It's really snappy and exciting, really fun to get jumps right out of the corner, but I think it's still overall harder to use throughout the whole power range. So map one was my preference. They made two main changes to the chassis this year. They increased the rigidity in the shock tower, and they also increased the rigidity up at the kind of the head tube area where you have the spars that come around under your, like behind the radiators and tuck in. They increased that gus in that overall material area there. So yes, they went stiffer. That is not always a bad thing. They wanted to try to transfer the energy a little bit differently in the chassis. And they also changed the head stays from the cylinder head to the spars from aluminum to steel, a little bit more rigid in some ways, a little softer than others. Overall, it balances the bike and it applies more pressure to the suspension. And with that, they were able to go stiffer on each end and kind of balance out the bike. I feel like this generation of bike definitely has a wider operating window than the prior gen, but overall, it's still a more precise bike. It's got a lot of front end weight on it. The Hondas are meant to steer off the front. Um, and by going a little bit more rigid, again, they've been able to increase the suspension stiffness so it doesn't wallow as much and the bike just feels overall more balanced. The only changes I made today were pushing the fork out a little bit in the clamps and going a little bit stiffer as I felt a little bit of dive and a harsh spot under heavy braking. Other than that, I was really satisfied front and rear suspension wise. Overall, the Honda, of course, is just a bike that is a very weighted on the front bike. It's very planted feeling on the front and it's really kind of built more for front end turning riders. With that, it's maybe a little bit more rigid than some in the class, but I definitely feel like Honda has taken steps to make their bike more balanced. But straight up, there are bikes such as the Yamaha and the Cowie that have a little bit more built in comfort in the chassis. This bike is a little bit more precise, a little bit more flickable and playful. But with that, you give up a tick of the comfort that some of the competition have. So overall, I know every year we do bikes that have minor updates. People go, is it really a big difference? 
Yes and no, they aren't dramatic, they aren't life-changing, but they are positive. For me, it's mostly in the power. Oh. I feel like that out of the box. Yes, you could work with somebody with an ECU, um, with an exhaust, a few other things, but I really feel like the overall package and where they've moved it with the throttle body and the cam, that torque, that usability off the bottom is really appreciated to me, and that makes this a much easier to ride bike. Chassis updates are minor. I don't think they'll be groundbreaking for most. And then the suspension updates, most guys will get their suspension done. If you got a local tuner you're working with or somebody you trust, you could probably accomplish something similar. So if you like the sound of the changes to the engine, then I'd recommend the bike. Otherwise, if you got the last gen Honda, it may not be a huge upgrade for you to go get the new model. If you like this bike test feature or any other of the content we do on this channel, please give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe, and make sure you stay tuned for more bike tests.